Number one, backdrop. In three, two, one. After that backdrop from just under one and a half meters, the good news is both phones are still working, but the bad news is both have their rear glass shattered. It definitely looks worse on the iPhone than it does on the Galaxy, with the cracks on the iPhone just going all over the place, whereas on the Galaxy, most of the damage is on that left side. But the big story here is the iPhone's main camera also cracked, where this didn't happen last year with the iPhone 13 Pro Max. So I don't know if this is just random bad luck or if it's it's because the camera housing on the new iPhone protrudes out more this year, but either way, it's definitely not the best result. Now, the good news for the iPhone though is the camera itself does seem to be working just fine. We'll keep an eye on it for sure as we go on, but for now, it's a clear win for the Galaxy in round number one. Of course, with the bounce case on it, the other iPhone 14 Pro Max that we're testing is perfectly fine. The raised ring around the camera housing was able to protect all those lenses, and while the case did get a few scuff marks on it, as you expect from anything dropping onto concrete, underneath the case, the iPhone 14 Pro Max is still perfect. So exactly the kind of result you'd want on an $1,100 phone. Round number two, corner drop. Three, two, one. After the corner drop, neither phone comes away unscathed. Both phones suffer some scuffs to their corners, where it looks like the scuffs on the Galaxy's aluminum run a little bit deeper compared to the iPhone's stainless steel. However, on the iPhone, the rear glass now looks even worse than before, with chunks of glass missing right there at the point of impact, where on this deep purple color, it turns out that the iPhone has some blue underneath it, which is pretty cool. But overall, this is too close to call, so it's a tie in round number two. The bounce case on the other hand, well, it had a nice and soft landing thanks to these air cavities and like the compression ribs here on the corners, where even the case itself barely has any visible damage to it, which is kind of surprising. Of course, underneath the case is what matters, where the iPhone is still in perfect condition. So a really good result here. Round number three, face drop. Three, two, one. Oh man, so after that face drop from nearly one and a half meters, the screens on both phones shatter. It definitely looks worse on the Galaxy with the cracks spider webbing all the way across the screen, whereas on the iPhone, the damage is mostly up top, which is a little concerning since that area is where the true depth sensor for Face ID is, but somehow Face ID still seems to be working just fine. Unfortunately, the same can't be said for the Galaxy's fingerprint scanner, where after multiple attempts, it just won't register a fingerprint. It keeps giving us this pop-up asking us to clean the screen, so it's a clear win for the iPhone in round number three. As for the bounce case, well, it seems like that EcoShock material combined with the raised lip that goes all the way around the phone helped the iPhone 14 Pro Max survive without a problem. The case itself looks clean, and of course, underneath it, the iPhone still looks as good as new. Bonus round. All right, so these phones have been through a lot with all the drops we've done so far being from higher up at nearly one and a half meters. So we're gonna do just one more drop straight onto steel this time and call it a day. Three, two, one. After that brutal bonus drop, we had chunks of glass flying everywhere, where while the phones technically survived, man, do they look worse. Whereas the iPhone with the bounce case on it, well, its screen still remains fully intact with the case doing its job. Now, taking a closer look, the Galaxy screen suffered some dead pixels at the bottom right with it just being completely crushed. And while the iPhone's front glass looks mostly the same, the rear glass just keeps getting worse with it now having some deep grooves at the top right here. And something that we noticed after doing the full inspection, the cracks that the iPhone initially suffered around the camera, both on the front and the back, are causing a little bit of flaring. It's not that that bad on the rear camera where you only see it when light hits it directly, but on the selfie camera, it is much more noticeable. So not the best result for either phone in the bonus round. Unless of course, we're talking about the iPhone with the bounce case on it, where even after that brutal drop onto steel, 
the case itself looks fine, and more importantly, the iPhone underneath it looks just like it did when we first unboxed it. Okay, so with all four rounds in the books, let's take a look at the scorecard, where the Galaxy edged out the iPhone in round number one, the phones tied in round number two, the iPhone had the advantage of being fully functional in round number three, and neither phone really standing out in round number four, making this one a tie overall. 